evening. Uh, my name is uh, Alexander Shaparukhin. I initiated, conceptualized, and produced the show. It's a theatrical show, which you will see tonight. And usually, I give some introduction about the story of Pussy Riot and the story of the show. And today, my introduction would be a little bit longer. Uh, so sorry for this, but it's not a lecture. I think it's informative and useful. Uh, because uh, this very place, this very city of St. Louis, is uh, very special for us and for me personally. Uh, first about some story of uh, the group and the show. Even despite the fact that members of the group explain many times about the history of the group, still some people expect a kind of punk band or a punk concert, but Pussy Riot was never a punk band. Pussy Riot was not a band at all. It never existed. It was just an image of kind of uh, fictitious band which uh, made some videos in 2011-2012 initially. Not all of them musical videos, but some of them musical videos. And since uh, two most famous musical videos, it's uh, uh, Punk Prayer, for which three girls have been imprisoned and uh, spent two years in, in prison, and a church in cathedral, and uh, before Red Square action against Putin's dictatorship uh, called Putin beat his, his pants. <laughs> in, in, in Russian language means that Putin got scared, you know. So these two actions were musical and uh, the, the girls pretended to be a kind of punk band. But they spent like usually 40 seconds, one minute before they have been ca captured by police or by some security guards, usually seconds and after this they made the video the filmmakers of the group integral part of the group made the video so usually uh, 15 20 20 people participated in, in pussy riot artists filmmakers some musicians but like few musicians never was a punk band so i was shocked when pussy riot have been sent for two years in prison for this cathedral action uh really shocked because uh, even though I am approximately twice older than most of the girls in Pussy Riot, it never happened in my life. An artist has been sent to prison for their artistic action. Uh, my, let's say, late communist era years, my Soviet Union years were much more soft than today's Putin's regime. It was not the Stalinist regime, it was like kind of the, the last phase of Soviet Union. It never happened in my life. Uh, also, Maybe it would sound kind of surprising for you, but my feeling was that the late Soviet Union of Gorbachev, when I first came to America, and early Russia were the most, most free countries in the world, not in terms of, say, electoral democracy, no, but in terms of artistic freedom, definitely yes. Because uh, we had no any boundaries of language. You could use any language, you could use any form, you could go like naked to Red Square to some kind of indecent, explicit, whatever action, say fuck Yeltsin, fuck president, you know, not, nothing happens. And uh, even when Putin started to oppress political opposition, and he started to do this from the very beginning of his term, and I told to Yeltsin's family, I knew Yeltsin's family who decided to put Putin to power, what are you doing, guys? You are bringing the evil, evil to power. It's, it's definite evil, but they didn't listen to thousands of people like me, you know? Mm. So, uh, but even when he started to do this, for like 10 years, artists remained still, let's say, untouchable. I can give you one example. Voina Art Group, the war art group, uh, kind of predecessors of uh, Pussy Riot. Several members, Nadia Tolokonnikova, who now lives in Los Angeles, one of the girls who were imprisoned, she was a member of Voina Group before starting, founding Pussy Riot. So what Voina Group did, just one and a half years, remember, one and a half years before uh, Pussy Riot Cathedral action, they've done a very famous action in uh, one of the historical bridges of uh, one of the most beautiful cities in the world, in St. Petersburg. Uh, you know, in St. Petersburg, all bridges, all big bridges, all historical bridges are draw bridges, like this. Because during the night, the bridge should go like this to, to allow ocean ships, big cruise ships, 
to proceed all over Baltic region to Baltic states, Sweden, Finland, Norway, Denmark, Germany, and further to Atlantic Ocean, everywhere. Uh, hundreds of thousands of tourists, maybe millions, every summer. So what they did, they draw in 40 seconds, exactly the same 40 seconds as Pussy Riot spent in the cathedral before they have been captured by the guards. 40 seconds to draw by the white pant, a giant, I think like 90 whatever feet, cock, dick, penis. <laughs> so this cock was, uh, in few seconds, was standing like this together with a bridge in front of a Russian security service headquarters. <laughs> and uh, the, the action was called uh, cock captured by FSB, the security service. <laughs> so then all these passengers of ships from all over the world, couples, non-couples, young, old, Russians, non-Russians, everybody, were photographed with this cock as a backdrop. <laughs> so my question, and it's interesting, the old Russians know the answer, but probably I, in, in, in other countries, people usually don't know, what was the punishment for this action? Uh, the punishment was uh, annual state award innovation for the best innovative art of the year by the Minister of Culture. Minister <laughs> of Culture was against it, but the council, the jury, they voted. These are the guys, they are the winners, you know. So, could you imagine our shock when one and a half years after Pussy Riot for the action of more or less the same, same level of hooliganism, say hooliganism for which they really deserved, really deserved by this very law of 2012, kind of five days of cleaning the church. It would be fair, it would be fair, why not? But they spent two years in fucking prison, you know, just because Mr. Putin and the uh, Russian uh, so-called Orthodox Church Patriarch decided that this, this girl should go to prison. And it was the moment when we realized that there's no more any law in Russia, that it's just like the court that is not a court anymore, it's just like executive uh, body of uh, Kremlin and whoever is the ruler of our country. And it was a big shock. And since I was um, artistic director of big Russian festivals, I decided to act. I realized that I can help the girls and at least to create some awareness. So I asked all the big um, pop rock stars to support Pussy Riot. First, we have people who were quite famous, but uh, it was easy for me to to awake them because they were my friends. I've done a lot of joint projects with them. The very first was Peter Gabriel, with whom I've done Woo! a festival WOMAD in Russia. Then uh, New York, known artist Patti Smith. I, I also have done a lot of things with her. And uh, she was guest in my home, whatever. So I just convinced them first. And then I started to write letters to go to festivals to ask people to support them. I approached about like 200, maybe 300 different artists. And then the chain of actions followed. Like Madonna made a show with the Pussy Riot in her bag. Then uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers made a show in Moscow as well. It's more Moscow show, so thousands of people. Then uh, Franz Ferdinand from England, Faith No More from San Francisco, my very good friends. All of them have done shows. I've done some conferences. I've done some video statements. Paul McCartney wrote, three handwritten letters to girls and to judges. So I brought these letters to courts, uh, videos and everything. Court had to uh, consider this and to announce, like to read these letters by law. And then I brought this to girls' prisons. That's how I met them, that's how we became friends. And of course, I don't think that this uh, international support um, impacted somehow the decision of so-called court, but definitely made life of the girls happier. It's possible, believe me, to be happier even in prison. So we became friends, we started to travel, and it's interesting that people, uh, especially people abroad, but in Russia as well, they associate Pussy Riot with these two most recognizable faces, Nadia and Masha, and they think this is Pussy Riot, but people don't realize that uh, Nadia and Masha, except some talking after the release from, from uh, um, prison, and the founding the very powerful media organization, media, uh, online media called Media Zona, defending human rights and, uh, you know, against police violence and government violence. This is the very, very important things they've done. But they never, never, ever performed as artists on stage. 
uh, their projects are completely distinct. All these songs uh, in English, they are not, not just songs, nothing to do with the er earlier songs of Pussy Riot and whatever we do now with this collective. So it's very distinct. And uh, in 2016, I asked Masha, Masha, we are talking all over the world, we meet ministers, prime ministers, like you know, Uma Thurman, like Madonna, everybody, but let's do something creative on stage. Yes, you are not a musician, but you have very good writing talent. Uh, you have some power, some presence. Let's do something. We will, we will combine music, your word, your story, your personal story with Pussy Riot, and historical video of insider filmmaker, filmmakers of Pussy Riot. So I spent like one year to convince her, then she says, I have a text. It's like a book. We, we should publish this book. But first, we started the tour from America. Not, not St. Louis, but from America. And uh, then uh, we made about 400 performances all over the world. We published the book in 12 languages, including USA, UK, Australia, Germany, France, Brazil, Czech Republic, Japan, Hungary, many countries. Then pandemic break happened, and then Masha was arrested again for almost one and a half years, in 2021, 2022. Nobody left Russia, by the way, we all were in Russia. So she was arrested for just one Instagram post supporting Russian uh, opposition leader Alexei Navalny, who was, as you remember, poisoned and then put to prison for one Instagram post. It shows you that in 2012, we are shocked, but very unlawful, against the law, to th two years imprisonment of the girls. Now, according to the new law, they made like hundreds of these laws, which allows them, our government, to put people to prison for like 10 years for Instagram posts, for 20 years for some kind of, you know, open uh, speeches against President Putin. So like this discreditation of army or something like this, many kind of things which allow them like kind of lawfully, according to the law, to put people to prison forever. So Masha spent all these two years like house arrest, jail, house arrest, jail, house arrest, jail. Uh, and uh, she had to go to another prison colony in uh, the end of April 2022, last year. And now this part of the story why St. Louis is so special for me, for us. Uh, I was here as a guest of uh, Susan Barrett, Barrett Barrera Projects, uh, several months. We tried to do something together. And she helped a lot to me, to my family, and to the girls. And she was witnessing how I was communicating with Masha, trying to convince her to try to escape from Russia. Because it's, uh, it's, it's, it's hard, but it's still possible. She didn't have Russian passport. She, her passport was confiscated by the police. The police car was uh, near her apartment building. And uh, she had to go to the court and to the next prison colony next day. But you know, policemen sometimes also sleep. So, <laughs> Masha's girlfriend, Lucy, she brought uh, the food courier uniform to her. So, she was learned how to destroy her uh, bracelet in her, in her leg, in her ankle. The bracelet which signals where she is now to, to the police. And she somehow managed to do this. And I was on the phone all the time, so a lot of people were on the phone with her. So she escaped from police as a food courier. By the way, this is a big story about this in New York Times. Probably some of you read about this. And she took a car and it's about 700 miles to Lithuania. She tried three times. Finally, she did this. And uh, I was like, with my heart beating and like nervous doing this from here. I was in communication with her from here, from the city of St. Louis in, in, in the home of Susan Barrett. So I want to thank Susan Barrett, by the way, is she here today? Is, is, is Susan here today? Yeah? I hope she should be here. So I thank her and her colleagues for helping us in 2021, 2022. That's why we are here, because when we've, we've got a Woody Guthrie Prize this year, it's a very good prize last year, uh, Bruce Springsteen was the winner. And um, some agent told us, let's do the tour in States. Of course, after six years of break, we've done everywhere, but not in the United States. And I said, okay, let's do it, but only if we include St. Louis. He said, oh, St. Louis, there's no, 
And she said, really, really, she said, this is simply so crazy. It's like no market there. It's not, no people who, who would be interested. You would have like five people there. I said, no, 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 no. I must get here just because I'm grateful to whatever this city and particularly Susan did for us. And I don't, and I say, I don't, I'm, I don't care about market, I care about people, about you guys, so thank you very much for coming. Woo! Uh, so, by the way, Masha, after all this one and a half years of nomadic life, without passport, without uh, proper documents, recently, like a few months ago, she has got from president, parliament, and the uh, uh, prime minister of um, Iceland, the citizenship of Iceland, so thank you, Iceland. So now St. Louis and Iceland are very special places for us. Iceland is a little bit smaller, anyway. <laughs> so, uh, about some other members of Pussy Riot. Um, Diana Burkot, she plays drums, she's a drummer, a keyboards, electronic programming. She was an initial member of Pussy Riot. She was in cathedral, in church, uh, but she was one of the two girls who escaped the rest. And uh, she also, performs as a pop singer and electronic music composer uh, with a project called Rosemary Loves Blackberry and yesterday she did part of the show in uh, the gallery here in St. Louis. Then uh, Olga Borisova, she's a, a younger member of our group. She was a 19 years old uh, police officer in St. Petersburg, uh, but later she probably decided that it's more interesting and more say useful for humankind to become a member of Pussy Riot instead of police. <laughs> So she, she spent a lot of time with Masha with protest actions. They have been arrested together many times. So they've done actions from uh, Northeast Siberia, Polar Circle Siberia, to Trump Tower in New York against political imprisonment. And uh, also she, she is a creative editor of Masha, Masha's books. Riot Day's book, uh, our show is based on this book now and the next book, and I think we'll do another show as well. So, and she's a very important person, but one and a half years ago we asked her, listen, why don't you go on stage? Why, uh, you, why don't you perform with us? You are a kind of insider of this project, you know this, try to be an artist. So she is a perfect part of our show for the last one and a half years. So then, uh, last but not least, uh, Alina Petrova. She was graduating from, she is, she's graduated from uh, Tchaikovsky Conservatory of uh, Moscow, one of the best uh, musical institutions of the world. She is a professional um, viola player, but last years she's more into composing uh, post-contemporary, post-academic uh, music, some improvisational music. She played with many American musicians like John Zorn, Bengal the Can, and others. And she recently has visited like really weird places, like for instance North Korea from one one side, and then. Antarctica from another. In Antarctica she has done very innovative projects of soundscapes of Antarctica. In our team she plays electric violin, some keyboards, some drums, but I hope she will explore her diverse uh, musical opportunities in our next projects. Um, Dmitry will do videos, Tanya will do subtitles, and very important thing, we send uh, half of our merchandise money to this very Ukrainian children's hospital in Kiev. And, uh, I know, I know the chief doctor very well. You can read about this hospital uh, scanning this QR code, or if you buy our t-shirts, our books, which Marshall will sign after the show, you also directly contribute to these very noble people, to this uh, very good and very brave medical team of uh, best hospital of Ukraine. Thank you very much. So I hope my long uh, introduction was kind of informative. And uh, ride this show of Pussy Riot, thank you.